Hi, my name is Tom Heffel, and this channel is all about helping students learn chemistry. In this video, we're going to be talking about nuclear reaction rates. Uh, specifically, we're talking about how fast chemical reactions take place if they're alpha decay, beta decay, gamma decay, all those reactions that we learned in the previous videos. We're going to talk about how fast they're occurring. Okay, And nuclear reactions are always based on first order kinetics which means they're going to abide by this kind of idea of half-life, okay? And they're going to, we're going to use this equation and this equation to talk about how fast they occur and how much is remaining after a certain amount of time, okay? So the example that we're going to be using today is strontium-90 going through beta decay, making this element Y here. So the strontium, the SR, is changing into Y through beta decay. But how fast is it going to occur? Well, if it's relates to this idea of half-life, this is how it works. What we're going to do is we're going to set up this chart that talks about half-lives, time, and amount. And when we look at this prompt, we're going to find out that the half-life time for this particular reaction is 30 years. So every 30 years, this reaction is going to experience one half-life. So at time equals zero, we're going to say we're going to start with an initial amount of 12 grams of this strontium-90. After one half-life has gone by, that means 30 years of time has elapsed. So we're going to put 30 years here. Now, the definition for half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the reactant to react. So if I started with 12 grams, 6 grams are going to react, and 6 grams are going to be unreacted. So if this, ha you know, reacts, half of it reacts, we're going to have 6 grams. During the second half-life, that means 60 years has gone by, which means half of this is going to react, and then we're down to 3 grams. And after three half-lives, we have 90 years that have gone by, and we're now down to 1.5 grams of our original, which is going to be strontium-90. Now, in earlier years, this has been taught to students, and they ask questions where everything lines up on the chart. For example, maybe a question is, how much strontium-90 is remaining after 90 years? You'd come down to 90 years and say, oh, look, there's 1.5 grams remaining of this strontium-90. Or they could ask a little bit more accelerated question. They might say, well, how much strontium-90 reacted after 60 years? You'd come down to your chart and look at 60 years, and you see that there's 3 grams remaining. Well, if there's 3 grams remaining out of 12 grams initially, that means 9 grams reacted, and there's 3 grams remaining. So the answer would be 9 there. Okay? When you get even more advanced, kind of like into the college level, and it's an AP chemistry level, if you're in high school or a very honors class, high-level honors class, they're going to start asking you questions like this. They're going to start saying, hey, what if we're in between these lines? For example, what happens if I told you that there's 9 grams of strontium-90 remaining? Okay, well, how much time has gone by? And the common answer that students do, and it's the wrong answer, is they, they use this logic. Well, we're halfway between here, so we have to be halfway between here, so I think the answer is 15, and that's a wrong answer, okay? And the reason for that is that this reaction is not linear, okay? This is not a straight line. As you can see, in 30 years, 6 grams reacts, but in the next 30 years, only 3 grams reacts. So it's not a straight line. In fact, it's curved. So we need to stay on this curved line here. It's not a linear uh, reaction, okay? So as time goes by, okay, it goes down very quick in the beginning, and then it, the reaction rate slows down. So the amount that reacts every 30 years becomes less and less and less. In 30 years, 6 grams react, but the next 30 years, only 3. The next 30, only 1.5. So as I was going to give you some sound to what's happening to the reaction rate, it starts out very fast and slows down. So it's kind of like this.
as far as how it's reacting, okay? So what we have is we have these two equations, and these equations keep us on that curved line, this part of the curve, okay? Because that's really how everything is working. So it's not linear. This is curved, okay, because the reaction rate is constantly changing. So let's try to figure this out, okay? The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the K is equal to, because you can see we're going to use K down here, and K is the rate constant. So the first part is figuring out what is the rate constant equal to. So I'm going to take T one half, which is the half lifetime, that's equal to 0.693 divided by the rate constant. And if I rearrange this equation, K is equal to 0.693 divided by the half lifetime. Well, the half lifetime is 30 years. So 0.693 divided by 30 years gives us a rate constant that is equal to 0 0.0231. And that's 0 0.0231 years to the negative one because years is in the denominator. So it's a per year, and this is how we would do a per year. Now, this is called the rate constant. So that's the rate constant. And it's going to be used in this equation. And this equation is the curve of that line. So it tells us that the natural log of the amount at time t, and it's matching up with this time over here. So if this time is 30 seconds, okay, this is the amount at 30 seconds. If this is five hours, this is the amount at five hours. This A sub zero is the amount at time equals zero. Sometimes we call that the initial amount. So let's go ahead and copy this equation down over here. The natural log of the amount at time t minus the natural log of the initial amount is equal to negative kt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in K right here. So I'm going to plug in that number, 0 0.0231. And I'm going to look up by time, or I'm sorry, I'm solving for time in this problem because that's what we're trying to figure out. It tells us that the amount at time T, okay, is 9 grams. So I'm going to put in 9 here. And the initial amount is 12 grams. So what I'm going to do is take the natural log of 9 minus the natural log of 12 is equal to negative 0 0.0231 times t. Okay? And I'm going to go in my calculator, and I'm going to take the natural log of 9, which is equal to 2.197 minus the natural log of 12, which is 2.485, and that's equal to negative 0 0.0231 times t. I'm going to subtract these two numbers, and it equals negative 0.288, and that's equal to negative 0 0.0231 t. And then I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 0 0.0231, okay? And t comes out to be 12.5 years. So what we find out is that even though the grams is halfway in the middle, the time comes out to be 12.5 years. Okay. And what I want to do is I kind of want to work this uh, equation backwards now. Okay. Just to make sure that we have it because this type of math is usually pretty easy for most students to understand. It's actually when you have to solve for one of these guys that a lot of students have trouble with. So let's kind of work that out, okay? So what I'm going to do this time, instead of solving for T, we're going to solve for the 9 grams. So it's kind of like working the problem backwards. So last time we started with the 9 and we solved for 12.5. This time we're going to start with 12.5. So I'm going to write that down in right here. And then we're going to solve for the amount at time T. So we really don't know what this value is. Now, we do because we're just doing the problem in reverse, but let's pretend that we don't. So how do we set this up? Here's the natural log of the amount at time t minus the natural log of 12, and that's going to be equal to negative 0 0.0231, and remember that's per years, 
times 12.5 years, and you're going to see the years are going to cancel out. Years as the numerator and years as the denominator will cancel out. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue this problem. The natural log of the amount at time t minus the natural log of 12, which we said is 2.485. And then what I'm going to do is multiply negative 0 0.0231 and 12.5 years. And I get this negative uh, 0.28875-ish number, okay? So right now, I'm going to bring this um, negative 2.485 to the other side. And so I'm going to add 2.485, and that's going to cancel that out. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And I get this natural log of the amount at time t to be equal to 2.19625. Okay, I'm just trying to carry all the numbers in my calculator. And this is where students get stuck, okay? How do I get rid of the natural log, okay? In your calculator, you're going to find the natural log button. And most calculators, if you hit the second button and then natural log, you're going to find the base for this, okay? Now, for logs, the base is 10. But for natural logs, the base is E. So if I hit my calculator second and the natural log, if you're using a regular TI-84 calculator, regular Texas Instrument graphing calculator that most schools use, you hit second and then natural log, you'll get base E, and that's what cancels out the log part. So I can figure out what the amount at time T is, but what you do on one side, you have to do on the other side of the equation too. So this is going to be base E to the 2.19625. And as you put that in your calculator, and that's the hardest part of this uh, problem is putting that in your calculator, you're going to find out that this comes out to 9 grams. Okay, So this is how you go from kind of, kind of go backwards, starting with 12.5 years and going back and getting your nine gram answer. So I hope this information helped you understand that when it comes to reaction rates and how half-life works, um, that if you're not on one of these lines perfectly, we're gonna have to use this equation, which is called the integrated rate law. And that's what keeps you on that curve because this is not linear, okay? The reaction starts out very fast and then slows down. If you found this information helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. And when you add that comment, it really helps push this information out to other students that might be interested in learning chemistry.